Hello and welcome to the second part of Hitch. This is the vocabulary lesson for Hitch 2, the second scene in Hitch. Let's get started. At the beginning, he says, uh, if you're shy, be shy. If you're outgoing, be outgoing. Outgoing is the opposite of shy. It's an adjective used to describe a person. An outgoing person is very friendly, likes to meet new people, loves to talk to people, likes to be very social. That is outgoing. All right, and then in the uh, next little line, paragraph, he says, she may not want to see it all at once, but she does want to see it. All at once. She does not want to see it all at once. All at once means suddenly. Suddenly. It means everything in a short time. So you can say, all at once, he hit me. It means suddenly, he hit me. He did it very quickly. All right, and then uh, going down, he says, uh, that means she said yes when she could have said no. That means she made a plan when she could have just blown you off. To blow someone off, you say, oh, she blew me off, uh, or he blew me off. Um, it means, uh, the general meaning is, means to reject somebody, to say no to them. Usually in kind of a rude way or, you know, not polite. So if you ask a girl for a date, you say, oh, will you go to dinner with me? And she just says, oh, sorry, I'm busy. Can't do it. You know, she's blowing you off. She's saying, she's, she's making an excuse. She's rejecting you. She's saying no. Uh, it can also mean to skip an appointment. If you have an appointment, you're supposed to meet somebody at 6 o'clock and you don't go. You skip it. You do something else. You never come and you don't call them, right? You just do not go and you never call them, nothing. Then we also say, uh, you blew that person off. You say, oh, I had, a, I had an appointment with my friend at 6, but she blew me off. It means you went to maybe the restaurant. You went to the restaurant at 6 o'clock and you waited and you waited and they never came. You say, she blew me off. Now, you need to be a little bit careful with this phrase, to blow someone off, because it also has a sexual meaning. It means uh, to give oral sex to a man. So that's the, uh, that's the sexual meaning. Say, uh, you know, she blew me off could have a sexual meaning. So be careful using it. Uh, make sure you use it in the right situation when somebody uh, skips an appointment without calling or someone rejects you when you want to... Uh, uh, when you ask them to do something. Okay, and then the next, uh, next couple lines, we have uh, the phrase, he says, so that means it is no longer your job to try to make, to make her like you. It is your job not to mess it up. Mess it up means to cause a problem. It means to fail and make a mistake. So it means everything is fine, everything is okay. Then you do something and you cause a big problem. You mess up the situation. You messed it up. So Hitch is saying, just relax. Don't make mistakes in, when you go on the first date. Don't mess it up. All right, then he's talking to a guy in the scene, and he says, the shoes are hot. The shoes are hot. Of course, he's not talking about temperature. Hot can mean uh, sexy, but that's not the meaning here. Uh, hot can also mean just looks really good, looks great, looks very uh, stylish, looks very fashionable, looks uh, fantastic. So you can say, the shoes are hot. It means, wow, the shoes look great. All right. And then he says, uh, he asked the guy, you went to the place I told you? And the guy says, yeah, but I don't think they're really me. Okay, they are me. I don't think they are me. I don't think they're really me. Really is not necessary. This is kind of an idiom. If you say, oh, I don't think they're me. Let's say you're talking about a shirt. You could say, oh, I don't think that shirt, that shirt is not me. It's not me. It means it doesn't fit your personality. It doesn't fit your normal style. For example, um, if I'm normally very casual, I wear casual clothes. And let's say someone gives me a suit and a tie, a very formal clothes. And I say, oh, thank you, but uh, the suit, it's not really me. It's not me. It means it doesn't fit my style. It doesn't fit my normal personality. Okay, and then in the next, uh, in the next uh, line, Hitch says, you is a very fluid concept right now. 
Okay, fluid means uh, comes from water. Fluid, the, the direct meaning of fluid means uh, uh, like water, water-like or liquid-like. So, but in this case, it has a more general meaning, and it just means easy to change, right? Water can change its shape very fast, very easily. It constantly changes its shape. Well, so we can use fluid to mean something that changes very quickly or changes a lot or is easy to change. And then concept means idea, of course. So he's saying you, he's saying your personality, your style is a very fluid concept. It means you can change who you are. It's possible to change. You don't have to always wear ugly clothes <laughs> is kind of what he's saying. He's saying you can change your style. You can, so you, your style, your personality is very fluid, is easy to change. Okay, and then he gives him some advice about his first date. He says the key tonight is hang back. Hang back means to uh, stay back. It means don't go to the front. Um, it also can mean, in this case, it means don't get too close. So this guy's on a date. So he's saying don't get too close to her. Don't be next to her all the time. Hang back. Give her some space. Let her go off on her own for a while. Let her go look at something. And you stay away. You go somewhere else. Don't be constantly next to her. Hang back. Stay back a little bit. And then he says, if she lingers at a photograph, move on. To linger means to stay in one place for a while. So if linger at a photograph, it means they're walking through a museum. And if you linger at a photo, it means you stop and you look at it for a while, right? You stay in that place for a while. You linger. We can also use it with our eyes. If your eyes linger on something, it means maybe your eyes are moving, you're looking at many things, and then you stop and you you look at one thing for a little while. You say, oh, his eyes lingered on the page. It means his eyes stayed on this page. They, they read this page for a little while. Okay, he says, so uh, if she lingers at a photograph, move on. Move on means keep moving, continue to move. Don't stay with her. And he says, maintain the visual, but maintain the visual. This is kind of a slang way to say, uh, keep eye contact, right? Make sure you can always see her. She can always see you. Don't be next to her, but make sure she can always see you. So he's saying it in kind of a slang way. He's saying maintain the visual. Keep the visual contact is what that means. Okay, and at the end of that first page, he says, uh, don't be wondering what she looks like naked. Naked means without clothes, with no clothes on. Okay, and then we move on to the... Uh, the next page, page number two, he's giving more advice about uh, first dates. Um, and he's saying, you know, you should talk to them, ask questions, don't look at their mouth only. Um, and then uh, th there's a scene where a guy is buying ice cream and he orders the ice cream. He says, let me get a bomb pop and a screwball for the lady. These are just names, names of uh, ice cream cones, a kind of ice cream from this. Uh, the guy is at an ice cream truck. And he's ordering. So a bomb pop, it's just the name of a kind of ice cream. Bomb pop. And screwball, that's another kind of ice cream. So that's all that is. Then the next line, Hitch says, but what I can tell you is that it happens in the blink of an eye. He's talking about falling in love. Falling in love happens in the blink of an eye. This is a very common idiom. In the blink of an eye, of course, means very quickly, suddenly, instantly. Right? And if you blink your eye, it happens super fast. So we can say, it happened in the blink of an eye. It happened very, very quickly. It happened very suddenly, instantly, in the blink of an eye. Okay, and then next he talks about the third date. He says, three dates and I'll get you here to the high stakes medal round. All right, let me, I'll, let me review the vocabulary, then I'll give you the general meaning. High stakes. High stakes means something that is very important, usually an event or an experience that is both important and risky. There's a risk. You might win a lot or you might lose a lot. Uh, for example, we might uh, talk about gambling. High stakes gambling means you bet a lot of money. Maybe you will win a lot of money, but you could also lose a lot of money. That's high stakes. Okay, so big potentially, possibly win a lot or possibly lose a lot. High stakes. And then medal round, medal round, it's a metaphor. He's talking about the Olympics 
in the Olympics in sports. In the Olympics, you know, gold medal, sil silver medal, bronze medal. The medal round in the Olympics is usually the last game or the last two games, and it's the it's the it's the most important games, right? It dis these games, this round decides who will get the gold medal, who will be the final winner, who will be the champion. So he is saying he's comparing date number three to the final Olympic Games. He's saying that it's the most important date. There's, it's high stakes. It means if you have a good third date, maybe she will fall in love with you and everything will be wonderful. But if the third date is bad, then maybe it's over. It's finished. She won't like you. And he says the kiss, the first kiss, is what will decide this. Uh, okay, so that's high stakes middle round. He's comparing it to the Olympic Games. Okay, and then finally he says, after that, after the first kiss, you're on your own. After that, you're on your own. You're on your own means uh, you are independent. You are free. I won't help you anymore. So it just means you are now alone. You are now independent. No more help. You're on your own. And then finally, the last line, he says, in life, it's not the amount of breaths you take. Of course, a breath is, <gasps> right? It's not the number of breaths you take. That means it's not how long you live. That's what he's basically saying. It's not how long you live. It's not how many breaths you take. It's the moments, it's the experiences, it's the times, it's the moments that take your breath away. Take your breath away or take my breath away, took his breath away, anything like that. It's an idiom and it means uh, something that amazes you and surprises you. And we use it for something that's wonderful. For example, you go to see the Grand Canyon in the United States. It's beautiful, it's big, it's huge. And you say, wow, the Grand Canyon took my breath away. The direct meaning is <gasps> you can't breathe. You are so happy that <gasps> you're, you stop breathing. You can't breathe anymore. All right, this event, this person, this experience took your breath away. It made you so happy, so amazed, so surprised you can't breathe. So he's saying that, you know, in, in life, uh, romance can do this. Love can take your breath away. And these great moments are the most important thing, the moments that take your breath away. Okay, that is all for the vocabulary for the second scene of Hitch. Good luck and listen to this a few times, then move on to the mini stories. Bye-bye.